Travelled to the back of beyond. <laughs> it is, it is a bit out It was worth a trip though, because I'm taking that hand with me. You are? Yeah. You can't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you so, want to talk about the amp then, and then I'll play? Yeah, it's the Hayden Mini Mofo 15 watt, and we're running into a Zilla 2x12 mic'd up with a SM57. And Dave's using his classic vibes, Squire. That I got Project Music in Exeter. There we go, plug for Project Music. Pro plug for Phil. Cheers, Phil. <laughs> picks that we get sent that are like stupid pounds each. Yeah. These are 29p. 29p. Traeger special. Traeger. <laughs> and they're fucking brilliant. So what, what strings you got on that one? Uh, whatever it came with from the factory. They're probably <laughs> Fender strings. Right. I don't know. So you don't um, know what gauge they are? Just in case they feel like know. nines. Actually no. But they're they're Diodarios. They're Diodarios because they've got coloured ball ends though. Yeah. I don't think you can see that on there. But um, yeah, Diodarios then. And they're nines. By the feel of them. So what 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 made you get a telly? Um, well, because I've got one exactly the same. And yeah, they're really nice guitars. But you've modded yours, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So yours is a bit posher than mine now. We did the tuners and the yeah, bridge and the bridge and, and the pickups. And pickups. Yeah, it's got a Seymour but Duncan. But mine's got more flaming detail on the neck. Yeah, I did. I did notice that. That's yeah. So I like mine better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fucker. laughs> um. No, um, a couple of years ago, I was volunteering at a studio right. um, near where I live, and they got um, a Mexican telly, which I kind of liked, but it got one of those, it was a cheapo Mexican Fender, yeah. and it got one of those really anemic looking necks on it. Because I, I found, I've played the Mex stra stra the Mex tellies, and these yeah. are better. Yeah, I think these are far, uh, I, I quite like, it wasn't a bad guitar, but... Um, then when the classic vibes came out, I got me a strat. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, and then I tried this, and um, so that's the butterscotch one. 
I'm not sure what, I think it is the butterscotch, yeah. The, you know, the body's the, coming through. From what I'm told, it's a pine body. Yeah, pine. It's um, three piece, looks like three pieces. Yeah, yeah. three piece body. And the, ma the, the apparently the maple is, I was told where the maple comes from. Uh, it's got the old style fender tuners, which are great. That's the one you've got to poke weed down yeah. through the old in it. But yeah, great guitar. Love it for the money. We well, can't beat it, can you? Less, you, less yeah. than 300 less quid. Less than 300 quid. And I, I, I've barely touched the tuner since I've had it, and I've played the hell out of it. Yeah, they, these are good. I, I, know, I know I upgraded mine. So it's, it stays in tune great. But there's nothing wrong with the ones I took off, really. Um, and, and I love my Strat as well, so classic vibe stuff. Do you gig in this one then? No, no, I'm not. I don't gig it. Um, I use my Paulie Smith for gigging, but um, I might do. I might take it out. It, the thing is, most of the stuff we do, um, it doesn't really lend itself to a single core sort of sound. Yeah. I, I've just, I, st I took mine to a, a few last week, mm. and it was sounding really good. I mean, oh. I was quite pleasantly surprised, really, because I know the single coil. You know, yeah. I've been using humbuckers and the single coils, but it, it sounded really good. And the leads really cut through. It was really nice. But with, with see, with the PRS, the odd song where I do use a, a single coil sound. Yeah. It's got a coil Co tap on coil it. Tap. So I just pop the coil tap on. So I've got all the sounds I need in one guitar, really. So you don't do any drop tunings on your band then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we do a bit of drop tuning. Um, we play. Um, Beastie Black Les Paul oh, right, drop yeah. stuff. Ah. We do a version of uh, Ram Jam's Black Betty. Right. But we did. I don't know if you've ever heard the Spider Bait version. No. Well, they do. Let's it have a listen. Drop. Play it up. And then you sort of go. To you know the, the riff. Yeah. And then um, when it goes into the quicker part. It's Starts off going. That is and, um, pretty raw. <laughs> we do we do a metal version of the Levelers. Um, Change these songs have you from the originals because um, you know there's a lot a of bands bit, yeah. out there doing covers and then they you know they stick to oh, what yeah. the song we, is. We, we well pe people look at us a bit gone out because like we they say what kind of music do you do and we'll go well everything from Kylie to Black Sabbath yeah and then I just, how does that work but they've all got our own you know it's not as if you're just covering the song you're actually no, no, no. putting your own stamp no, on it. it sounds it sounds like Eat the Rich playing somebody else's song rather than somebody trying to play somebody else's song exactly like the original. That's good. Um, so yeah, we stick our own stamp on them. And we, we mess around with songs as well. Um, we've just started doing um, another Leblers tune called... Um, see, you're asking the wrong person what these songs are called because I don't sing them. So how many people them. are in the band? You, there's four of us. There's, four, four piece. There's myself, guitar, um, and then there's Tim. Tim Truin, who sings and plays electric fiddle. Right. Um, Neil Pratt, who plays bass and does a bit of singing as well. So, wh whereabouts do you play? Where's your regular 
gig spot pretty much all over Devon, Somerset. Um, we do the odd ones in Dorset. We've even been ventured down to Cornwall a couple of times. Oh dear. And we do weddings and parties, and um, mainly pubs. We do weddings and parties as well. So what sort of people, you, how many people are you getting at each event? Uh, we usually get a good crowd in, usually sort of 80 to 100 you got, people. You've got a good following then, there's, there's people yeah. that will yeah, travel we've got to a see loyal following. We, we see a lot of the same faces over and over again, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, Occasionally we get a bit of a naff night, but um, this is the first band I think I've been in for a long time where consistently we get decent sized audiences every time we go out. That's good. So it may, you know you kind of look forward to it because there's nothing worse than having a paid rehearsal where you just play into an empty room. So so you you're using you know you're using a backline or a PA is is yeah is sound use, men up there? No. No, we use, um, it's, it's quite a simple setup really, We, I use my um, Bugera stuff and Neil's got his Jens Benz monster bass rig Right. and then um, we got um, PA for front of house with a couple of power monitors and that's our setup. Really. So you mic'd up or DI'd out no, anything? No, just turn it up loud. Right. And he's so singing out through the, the PA? Back, yeah, yeah, the, the only thing that comes out the front is Singing in Vocals, electric fiddle, and sometimes we'll put a bit of drums through. Right. Um, but the bass and the guitar, we just turn it up so that it hits the back of the room, yeah. so that the people standing at the front get seriously injured yeah, by the noise coming in their face. Because <laughs> the band that we're in, you know, I'm DI'd out and, and the other cabs mic'd up and yeah. the drums are fully mic'd up and the acoustics are DI'd and it's all coming out of the PA, so our back line isn't very. We, we, play loud. The PA. we play quite loud. Because we got well, having said that, I only use a 50 watt amp. Mm. Um, and I have it turned up to about half. It's, it's loud enough to go over the drums. Yeah. And it's it's loud enough, but, you know, because the PA is really loud, you know, yeah. we're crashing out of that and it's, you know, real chest thumping I, stuff. I, I, tried a, I tried a 100 watt head at one rehearsal and um, actually, no, it's a 120 watt head. Total now. overkill? Yeah, well, I couldn't really get the, the amp loud enough to get it sounding good. Right. If you know what I mean. I had to have it too quiet. Whereas the 50 watt head that I use, the Bugera V55, I can push it really hard. Yeah. So it sounds incredible when it's well, cranked. Well, you know, the Hayden, it's only 15 oh, watts. That sounds phenomenal. I've got to get me one of these. And it is. Let's talk enough about old band. I want to talk about this amp because I need to blag one off the company. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's a two-stage amplifier um, it's got a mofo more you know like a boost and we've got the gain quite high and the boost engaged oh, it's just a nice little 6L6 you know Celebrities, <laughs> <laughs> they should send us one each. Yeah. <laughs> if only that was the case. So, did, so do they? Do, is what? What? What else is in their range then? See, so ideally for me, I'd like something with that setup. Yeah. I wouldn't want anything more. Any more kind of more controls. Or I think they do a fifty. I think they do the most. Shitloads of channels and all that stuff. I don't like any of that. I like. I like stuff that's simple. Well, that that is as simple as you get. You know, mm. if you want, if you want a clean sound. 
you've got to dial the volume full blast. So you, you bring you the game in. So you can't channel switch it then. Yeah, I've got a switch over there, but the lead's quite short, so oh, right. it has got a foot foot switch which right. engaged the boost, and and we got that boost on. So now. you can switch it over from clean to distortion, can you? No, you no, can't. you can't. You, you, it can either. So you have to use your guitar to. Yeah, it's 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 underscore. You, you know, I, 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 if you want it clean, then just roll off. The Try it with my uh, with my um. Actually, just chuck us your your Les Pauli nag thing because I've never played that until I came here. So that is. Tell people what this is because I don't know anything about it. Now this it's is it's a nice guitar. A nag's guitar. This is a Kanai Tier Three. And Nags do guitars in tier one, which is really high spec. You mm -hmm. know, like your PRS custom shop and private stock. Yeah. It, you know, have high quality top. You mm -hmm. know, high quality tone woods, and a tier two, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Man's guitar, which is which is the same high quality build standard, the same, the same high quality part. The wood options are just. Hang on a minute, how do you get rid of this thing that you used to cheat with? There you go, put it on your wrist. It's a wristband, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Time, so I'm, I'm lying really, I do cheat. Yeah, no, that, those ones are really good actually. Because you, know, you use a hairband and that really mutes it off. If only I had a technique good enough to use one of those, but unfortunately. <laughs> SE single cuts like the yeah. SE Tremonte and that. It feels like one of those, so it's yeah, it's great. Love it. Mm. Nice fat chunky neck. Yeah. And it sounds huge. <laughs> Design. It's got that. I wouldn't know whether you could bring them up and over because of the hard corners. Yeah, no, you wouldn't be able to, would you? Yeah. 
it's, you know, it's a... They wouldn't space right, would they? No. On there. It wrecks that, it wrecks the tail bar though. Yeah, I, I tried so it on my Les Paul. What, wrap over the bridge? Yeah. Um, just so that, just to kill a myth, because I've been asked loads of times on my channel, why do I have the... Uh, do you do, do you do it just to copy off Zach Wild? No. Oh, it gives you a little bit less tension. Ever since I've had a, a Les Paul. But what it does, it angles the strings and you get less string breakage. Right. So when you're a poor Does it make musician, it feel soft you can't afford a new. No, it doesn't really alter the intonation, really. Right. But um, when you're um, when you're gigging, you can't afford a new set of strings every gig. Yeah. It cuts down. String Unfortunately, breakage. I'm not in that position because the good people at Planet Waves and Dear Dario send me a box of strings. Send me some. <laughs> I I do a hundred Planet Waves. I do a hundred gigs a year. Come on. Send me some strings. <laughs> Afford to buy a custom shop Les Paul, you can afford to buy a couple of tailpieces, can't you? One for yeah, wrapping the bridge but, over. Or, or, or if you've got a, like a, a PRS private stock single cut with a with a tailpiece and tunematic bridge, yeah. you perhaps don't want to do it. Because it's all, all Goto hardware on this. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, so it is. Yeah, it's re really high spec guitar. <laughs> Two thousand three hundred for this one. To the high spec ones, then. Well, I was sent a tier one, and it retailed for about seven thousand. Seven grand for a guitar. Yeah. My first house was only nine. <laughs> 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 Stock PRS will cost you six, seven grand, maybe oh, yeah. eight, yeah, nine grand. Yeah. Well, that and one, that one of mine would be the cost of twenty-four now right. is three grand. And I don't know whether you know, but Joe Nags used to work for PRS, and he built all the private stock guitars. He was head of R and D, and you know most of the collectors' guitars were probably made by him anyway. So you can understand. Mm. <laughs> Show you on camera now. On camera. You got to do start doing this in your videos. Right. Right. You can do pentatonic scales, can't you? Okay. So you thank Colin for inviting me over and let me try his stuff and nick one of his amps. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a free guitar. I got my eyes on you. I can fucking do that. Of course you can. Look. Right. You can do a pentatonic scale, can't you? Skip one of the strings. Oh, skip. That's it. And then back down. Yeah. I have to practice. 
to start. Yeah. What do you want to do? Right, so you go. And I'm just hammering on, only picking each string once. So it's kind of like sweet picking in a way, I suppose. Or economy picking, whatever they call it. So they've got so many names for picking techniques now, haven't they? It's ridiculous. <laughs> In your middle finger as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do it. Do it slowly and um, concentrate on making sure each note is played well, rather than trying to play them really fast and they don't sound so good. And to get that smooth, liquid sort of tone. Yeah. Don't pick all the notes. No. I mean, obviously, you pick them all. So, obviously, you're doing. If you pick all the notes, it's a cool lick anyway. Yeah. But if you if you want that kind of liquid sort of tone, I only pick each string once. Shifting positions. Yeah. So I'm going from the um, B minor first position to C sharp to E to F sharp. Like the cage system, five shapes, mm. and that's what you're doing. You just yeah. did you do some of those really good repeating licks as well, didn't you? Oh, yeah, the Paul Gilberty sort of thing. That, I've done a video on that recently, it's just the Dorian blues scale, right? So, if you do a blues scale, and you go. You want to make it like a Dorian uh, pentatonic scale, you would add. So, if you add the blues note as well, you get the Dorian blues scale. Right, that's what it's called anyway. And it's. It's easy because it's just a parallel pattern, symmetrical pattern. So all, all the, once you, if you get that down, but not as crap as that. Yes, not, I don't mean you. I mean me. Not as you have to. The, the trick is not to do it how I just did it, but to <laughs> pick each note once, not and so on. And then just go back and forth like that. Repeating one. Yeah, just throw your little finger in on that fret there. Yeah. For fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's so you can do it legato. So. Or mix it up. On guitar, though, I mean, um, a lot of stuff that people do that sounds really impressive. It's quite easy. The, the, it, 
you know, you can, you can. It's you, just extending pentatonics yeah, most of the time. If you want to do it that way, you can just learn shapes and get away with it. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, if you learn a three note per string pattern. <laughs> Adding little notes here and there. 